prove that one plus tan squared theta equals sex squared theta, or it could say is identical to sex squared theta, is an identity. So that means it works for every value of theta for which um, this is defined. So there will be uh, values for tan squared theta that are not defined, but for everywhere else it will work. So, basically, when it says the proof, the way I am always going to look to do it is to turn the left hand side into the right hand side. So, I'm looking to turn, I'm looking to start here, I'm looking to turn that 1 plus tan squared theta into sec squared theta. So, I'm looking to start on the left, do some substitution, do some manipulation, rearrange some things, simplify and end up on the right. What I'm not going to do is kind of have, have a two sides of an equation working and personally I would never try to work from right to left, although it is potentially perfectly viable, but personally I never do it. Okay, just looking at sec squared theta, you might need to know your, your kind of target, the thing that you're aiming at is for sec squared theta sec is 1 over cos theta, so sec squared is 1 over cos theta squared, so you're aiming at 1 over cos squared theta. So it's 1 squared over cos theta squared, 1 over cos squared theta. So that's what we want to aim at. We start with 1 plus tan squared theta, so if you look at what we're aiming at, well we need a cos theta. The only way you're going to get a cos theta is by using the um, identity for tan. So we know that tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. So I'm going to say equals 1 plus sine theta over cos theta squared. There you go. Tan squared theta means tan theta and then you square it. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Then if we just uh, look at that, well that is 1 plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. Okay, so then if we just go back to our target, we're looking at one fraction, 1 over cos squared theta, so it's probably a good idea to try and add these two terms together. We only are interested in one thing, we don't want the target, we don't want to end up as a sum. So if I'm going to combine the 1 and the uh, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta together, well, I'm going to have to write 1 as a fraction with a denominator of cos squared theta. So that is going to have to be cos squared theta over cos squared theta. So there's your 1 rewritten in a nice convenient form plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. For these proofs as well, that hopefully goes without saying, but you do need to show every step. It's not a good idea to jump two steps. So for now, for example, you might see where you're going and you might think, oh, well, I know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is one, but you should still show every step because we're showing a proof. Uh, don't. Um, give the examiner a chance to take a mark from you. So that equals cos squared theta plus sine squared theta over cos squared theta. And now we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. So this now is 1 over cos squared theta, and you could, if you wanted to, you could write, well, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. Just shows the examiner, shows the reader that you know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So just remembering what the target is, we want it to be one over cos squared theta. We are there, but we should probably show that we know that this is sec squared theta. So just finish it off equals sec squared theta as required.